Hey, good morning, everybody. How's your Monday starting off? Um, I am in Virginia, and it is a rainy day today, which uh, turned into fall very quickly in this area. So I wanted to just check in and see how things are going. How is your week going? Are your weekend going? And how productive is your week going to start? So what I thought we would do is kind of go right into it so we can kind of get started. Um, if you haven't joined me on Mindset Monday before, welcome. Uh, every Monday, 8 a.m., we talk about different topics that affect us, that really um, basically get in our head, that prevents us from doing things to the greatest of our ability. So, hey, guys. Good morning, everybody that's joined us. Hope you guys are doing well. So, I am a business strategy coach, and the number one question that I would say I get from all of my clients or anybody else that I meet, um, they always want to know how can I be, become successful as quickly as possible? What can I do? What activities can I do to get into production at a high level or run my own businesses more effectively? And it's an interesting thing. So what I always think about when they ask that question is they're really wanting the silver bullet, the silver bullet of how to be more successful in their personal life, more successful in their business life, more successful in every activity they do. And when I was thinking about today's topic, I thought this is the silver bullet. So today's topic is about failure. Yep. The F word that a lot of us hear a lot in our lives and there's a lot of mindset around failure. Um, that's positive and negative. So we're going to talk about that for the next few minutes. And I'm excited if you guys want to jump in and um, ask any questions along the way, I will make any every effort to read those as I go through. So I want to talk about what failure is as far as a mindset. Typically, we look at failure as a bad thing, and I want to look at how we can shift that into a positive aspect. So um, if you haven't joined me with Mindset Mondays before, I typically end with a quote. And I actually, this time, wanted to actually start with a quote. Uh, this is a quote that actually I have written on my email signature. It's something that I look at every day. It's something that I email back and forth. If you've ever emailed me, I recommend you looking at the bottom of my email. It says, success consists of going from failure to failure without loss of enthusiasm. And that was from Winston Churchill. So this quote says, success consists of, of going from failure to failure with loss of enthusiasm. So I think that is an interesting thing because when we go into the mindset around failure, I think of three things. And I want you guys to think about this in this context. And as we have this discussion today, think about it. The first thing that I focus around with my mindset around failure is that the most successful people in society have come out of failure. We're going to talk about that a little later in the conversation. But the most successful people have failed. So if I fail, does that make me become more successful? I think what I would say, you fail forward, right? The second thing is, failure has taught me that I'm tougher than I thought. So there are so many times that I've failed at an activity or failed at a business or failed at a relationship, and I realize afterwards I'm much tougher than I thought. The third thing that I focus on is it causes me to change and evolve more quickly. So there is no one activity that could be greater than you learning something, you educating yourself, and basically picking yourself up and dusting yourself off than failure. It's an op opportunity to evolve because we're looking at it, reflecting back on what did we do wrong, what did we do right, right? So think about failure in a way of those three things. Successful people have all failed, a lot of them. We'll talk about that. Failure has taught me I'm tough, and it causes me to evolve or grow more quickly. So I think also part of failure is acknowledgement and then the reflection back. So we'll talk about that. So what I thought I would do just to give to lay it all out on the line is I want to talk to you particularly about a failure that I've had in my life. I've had many, so I was trying to choose one that would be appropriate for today's conversation. But I want to take you back. Um, I was probably eight or nine years ago, uh, people in my world, we decided to start a business. It was going really well, very successful. Uh, and then we saw just a few years ago that the data, the facts, basically a situation occurred that we were going to have to shut this business down. So I remember that day specifically, um, I had to lock the doors. I had to call the employees and said that they're no longer employed with that business. I also had to call all the clients and tell them, that were no longer in business as well. And I just remember the feeling that I had when I had to do that. It was kind of like 
the five signs of the five stages of grief, if you guys know what those are, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and then acceptance. I was in denial for a long period of time, right? So failure has a way of doing that to us that's, oh, I'm not failing. This is, this is going great. This is going fine, right? Anger, blaming others. Oh, he did this. She did that. And then you go into bargaining. Well, maybe if I fix this or do something different. And then really the fourth thing for me was depression. It got to the point where I felt like I failed my business. Obviously, I failed my clients. I failed my customers. I failed my family is the biggest one, right? But then I went into acceptance. And I one thing that I think that any successful person should think about is that you just got to accept it as, as right now as a failure, but it's an opportunity for growth. So like I said, then I had to look at a point of reflection. And I thought, honestly, this failed business was the best thing to happen to me. Of course, not something that I wanted to experience, but because it taught me so many things. It taught me who I should be in business with, how I should run my business, how I should look at numbers differently, how I should be more strategic, different strategies that I should have used. And I have education and background in business, but there's not one better way to have training and experience than to fail. And so I want you to think about that. What have you failed at? that has make, made you better? What have you failed at that has brought you to the higher level of consciousness of what you're doing? I'm telling you, it is the silver bullet for success. It really is. If failure will make you better, and the faster you fail and recover from it, that's the key, you have to recover from it, it will make, make you more successful. I want you to really go into that and, and really dig into the mindset behind that. But by failing, that means you actually have to take risks. If you're a cautious person and don't fail, then you haven't you haven't changed the world yet. You haven't created a passion around it. If you're in a position where you're conservative and you're safe, you're not doing things outside your comfort zone. So I challenge you to fail as often as you can because that shows that you are always trying new things. You're always going outside the box. Chuck says, need to fail to prevail. Absolutely. You've got to prevail. But in order for you to fail, you have to get outside of your comfort zone. And there's so many of us that literally sit back and watch others have success when we should have the success, right? And I think a lot of it's the fear of failure. And I think that is something that we recognize and we look at that that is a huge part of why some people are successful and some people literally live an average or normal life. And that's okay, but understand that failure is right around the corner with, for success. Um, so one of the things I thought that would be interesting is I look back at some, at, like I said, one of the things I look at all the time is I actually study a lot of successful people that have failed. It's kind of a, a hobby of mine. It's something that I look at. It helps me with my mindset because if I look at people that are highly successful now and I read their failure stories, I think, well, I'm just one failure away from the next success story of myself. So one thing, I would, there's a few people that kind of popped in my head I wrote down, Walt Disney. Walt Disney got fired from the newspaper he was part of because the lack of imagination, he had no good ideas. Walt Disney had no imagination, really. So he failed in order to propel himself into the, to the business that he created. Uh, J.K. Rowling, I don't know if you guys know, but she actually was on welfare while she was writing the Harry Potter series. She was failing at so many different things, even though she was obviously very talented, but she kept pushing through um, based on the, on the fears that she had. Also, one that I'm kind of obsessed with right now is Harlan Sanders. At age 65, he had a history of restaurant background, but he failed at a lot of different restaurants. He actually was at 65. He had a Social Security check of $105, and he basically took that $105, and it was his last attempt to create a franchise for his chicken fr uh, fried chicken recipe. He got rejected 109 times before that $105, the last person he was going to contact, saw value in what he was bringing to the table and franchised what we know now to be KFC. If he was a person that looked at failure as this is the last stop, this is it, we wouldn't have good old fried chicken, right? Also, a couple other people to think about is, I don't know if you know, Dyson, James Dyson. We've got a Dyson vacuum in our house, and I swear, every time that I'm vacuuming, I think about this guy because he went through 5,000 different prototypes 
to, and he spent all of his savings. He spent 15 years trying to perfect this perfect vacuum, right? And now his vacuums are sold everywhere, and he is worth 4.9 billion B billion dollars because of his vacuums. Again, he failed a thousand nine times. So that's something I want you to think about and just be aware of the failure behind that. The last one, although we have the lights on, Thomas Edison, 10,000 attempts for the, for a light bulb. We have lights. You know, he kept trying. So I, the word try keeps coming up. And you guys know probably from conversations that I've had with you guys on other Mindset Mondays, I don't like the T word. I think it's kind of like a cuss word. There is no try. But in this exception to the rule, we've got to keep trying. We've got to keep trying to learn from the failures that we mistake. Not get stuck in the depression, not get stuck in the anger or the bargaining. But we need to accept it, but then we need to reflect back on it. Every time you fail, there's an opportunity to look at that, analyze why I failed, and what can I do better, right? It's not fail when they keep doing the same activity over and over again, right? Yeah, Michael Jordan didn't make the varsity team during sophomore year. He propelled him to work really hard. What failure does is it allows us to be laser focused on what we did right, but then also laser focused on what we did that we should have done the first time correctly. And there's a lot of it's just the experience, right? Because like I said, when I shared my, my story about my failed business, I knew about business. I had been to college. I, I knew how to run a business. But until I was in the trenches and I had the failures that I had, I didn't learn from those mistakes. So now the future businesses that I have, that I've created, I'm much more sensitive or conscious of the, of the choices I'm making, the environment that I'm in, because of the failure that I had. So when I go into this week, you're going to fail at something. And you know what? That's a great thing. Because if you're failing at something, then you're propelling yourself to the, you're getting outside your comfort, book, comfort zone, right? So look at this week and think about what I can do to change my mindset around failure. Because if we change that mindset, like I've talked about in the past episode, I really think you can make change in your life, in your personal life, your wealth, a lot of different things. Because failure is just around the corner for success. Every no that will lead you to a yes. And you just got to figure out how many no's it's going to take in order to get to the destination that, that you talk about. We talk about with a lot of my, because I coach a lot of real estate agents, how many no's is it going to take until we get to a yes? We can mathematically figure that out so we know every time we get a no that we're going to lead it to a yes. So think about what your business is like. Think about what you're feeling at, and instead of getting depressed and angry about it, what can we do to implement change? What can we do to learn from it? I'm telling you, the best silver bullet, in my opinion, is failure. So I want you guys to have a great day. I want you to think about your mindset around a lot of the topics. Make sure you join us next Wednesday or next Monday. Not Wednesday. Not doing one on Wednesday. But next Monday at 8 a.m. We're going to continue the conversation about a mindset around different topics. I hope this is adding value. Thanks for shouting out with me, uh, sending me emails, text messages, things like that. Again, we can focus on different mindset issues. I think we're going to make a big difference. All right, well, have a great Monday, and I'll talk to you guys soon. And focus on your failures and learn from them and reflect. Great. Have a good one. Bye, guys.